Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jesse and I recently got the Revo Point Mini 2 3D scanner from Revo. Uh, I actually paid for the scanner. I didn't, you know, it's not like I got this as a free review or anything like that. This was actually a purchase. Uh, I just opened up this case here. You can see what's inside. I've actually played with it a little bit already, but anyways, uh, here's the actual scanner itself and in an incredible carrying case. I must say they went way above and beyond on uh, the packaging for this. Now there's supposed to be a little Julius Caesar in here. He's actually tucked up inside the top of this case here. As you can see him, he's down in there. Let me grab him out of there. Yeah, let's get him real quick and just put him back in his hole. Um, every one of their scanners comes with a little dude for you to test with. But anyways, there you go. It comes with all this good stuff. Let's get to work. I figured if I was going to do a review, I would do a tough one. So I went ahead and grabbed a lead crystal grizzly bear statue. Now, 3D scanners aren't supposed to be able to do clear things or shiny things. So I figured this would be a perfect worst case scenario. And here's how I'm going to go ahead and do it. I got me a can of this AE Sub 3D scanning spray. It's basically a, uh, it sprays almost like a super fine powder onto the surface of things and makes it so that they're not shiny they're not reflective anymore now this stuff is absolutely fantastic the only problem is that it smells bad it smells like mothballs or naphtha but anyways you spray it you scan it and you're done and about four hours later uh, this thing will be absolutely clear again and as you can see I've ducked out into my garage so let's get to work on this I'm just gonna start blasting it with this stuff now when I first start out spraying this, I'm, I'm really close up on it. Um, and, and that's just to get an initial base layer going, just to, just to knock down all the high points. And I just go around it and just blast it with little short sprays, like just like you see me doing there. And uh, I'll, I'll shake the can up a little bit and just make sure you go all the way around. But you'll notice some shiny spots. And those spots are going to cause problems later. So what I'm going to do is actually just keep spraying this, let it dry just a little bit, and then I'm going to hit it with some more. And But when I do it the, the second time, I'm actually going to back up a little ways and just kind of let it dust it. And I find that that's the best way to do it. You get yourself a good initial coat, and then you let it dry for a minute, and then you back up, and then you just blast it some more. Now, one thing to remember, you really want to make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies and the underneath spots. And like here you see, I laid it on its side so I can actually spray the bottom of it. And this is absolutely essential. Because if you really want a good clean model, you got to be able to scan the whole thing from all the different angles. And so uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just blasting it and I'm going to stand back a little bit. And, uh, you know, it, if you spend a little bit more time in this stage, look, look, notice how the shiny spots are gone. Spend a little bit more time in this stage will save you a lot of headache later, uh, filling holes and cleaning up the artwork. If you can get this thing as matte frosty as possible before you start scanning you're gonna have a much 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 better scan as your final result so basically uh, I'm gonna stop the video here and back up a little bit and do some more spraying and then uh, once it dries a little bit I'm just gonna pick it up and take it inside and I'll meet you back in my office Wow that was fast okay we're back in my office and I've got the little electric turntable set up and just to show you the, the setup real quick I got it up on its stand aimed at the bear and it's slowly spinning so I'm gonna go ahead and fire up Revo scan <clears throat> now first thing I do is I gotta hit my USB power to actually turn the scanner on and right there is where I hit the button so this is gonna start connecting and it just takes it a minute there and it's gonna immediately uh, connect and I'll just hit the new project button and we'll get started scanning so here you go we're connected I'm just gonna hit new project and it immediately starts looking at the bear and as you can see it's spinning around on the right side I'm moving the, uh, the the scanner around because I want everything to be between the excellent and the higher end of the fair on that on that graph there so you can adjust the scanning distance to see how far it looks you can adjust the exposure all kinds of different options just to give you a, a, a better um, a better final result so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is once I've got everything looking good on the screen there uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, and hit start and as you can see it just immediately starts scanning in the bear 
And because it's got that matte finish, it's actually able to see what it needs to see. Now, if this were clear, it would have just an absolutely bonkers result right now. You would not get anything useful out of it. It would just be absolute trash. Um, now, if you notice on this bear, as it's spinning, you've got blue, you've got gray, and you've got green. Okay, so the green is where it has actually detected the surface and blue is where it's detected it in the past so it's basically slowly building a model right now I'm aiming my camera down a little bit so I can get that base and uh, you'll notice the blue parts are, are still there so as it turns it expects to see the bear in that position because that's data that it's already gathered and and, and basically what it's doing is it's taking um, 30 frames or well maybe 15 frames or so per second photographs using a blue LED or in some cases a UV LED based on the model you get that it uh, is then able to interpret and get a point cloud out of it so here I'm gonna go ahead and just pause it and if you'll notice in the little camera view you'll see me reach in with my hand and I'm just gonna pick up the bear and I'm gonna lay him on his side and then I'm gonna unpause it and after a second or two of looking at it it's gonna figure out that I laid it on its side see how it says tracking lost Boom, there you go. It figured out that I moved the bear and laid it on its side. So now it's going to just continue scanning like nothing ever happened. And now it's going to be able to see some slightly different angles uh, as it's rotating here. It's seeing different parts of the bear that it couldn't see before, including the base. Now, you may notice um, every now and then you might see a little bit of trash or something floating around on the screen. And in fact, it's going to get real bad here in a minute um, when I actually physically pick up the camera and adjusted it and uh, that you know it's the software is really smart I mean really smart it's able to detect um, bad data like that and it will actually fix it so I, I think here in a second right somewhere around here I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and then pick up the bear and lay him on his other side just to make sure we get all the nooks and crannies and then boom just like that it picked it back up again no problem so far this software is absolutely user friendly so we're just gonna let it go ahead and, and complete a couple passes here just do a little bit of extra spinning and uh, more data is always appreciated but then um, here coming up in just a second is where I actually pick up the camera and and adjust it and um, start to move it around a little bit and you can actually play with the the, the model and rotate it around and see different angles basically give yourself an idea of what you need to be um, fixing okay here's where I start moving the scan around because I'm an idiot and uh, I'm, I'm aiming it down and now look at that now I got a bunch of trash in the screen that's just wonderful gotta love that but you know what it's actually not gonna be that big of a deal so I think I got enough data here uh, I'm gonna go ahead at this point and just hit complete and we're gonna actually see the actual point cloud here some several thousand frames of data and uh, all I got to do is hit one click and apply now this is going to take a minute so I'm going to go ahead and pause this and cut out a bunch of time that this took and then uh, we'll come back in just a second and I will show you some more um, right now if you notice on my on my uh, clock down in the bottom corner I think it's like 445 when I did this but anyways this took about maybe five ten minutes and uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the audio here and come back when it is when it's done. So see you in a second. OK, so it looks like it's about done now. It's finishing the one click editing and it's saving the actual edits. And there you have it. Look at that. That is absolutely outstanding. But if you notice, if you look real carefully, it's got some holes in it. Now, you know, in the old days, this would be the end of the world. But this software, like I said, this software is absolutely incredible. All I got to do is click the fill holes button, hit detect, let it sit there and, and cook for just a second, and it's going to surround all the holes with a bright green pixel so you know exactly where they go. And then once you find all those holes, doo -doo 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 -doo, there you go. Just click on it and click on another one, and then we're just going to hit apply. Now, I figured it was going to create some janky looking polygon patch but somehow this software uses AI or something because look at the result when it finishes this is on a complex curved 
organic structure. Come on now. It does take a second. Look at that. Wow. That is incredible. It absolutely made just short work of that hole. So I'm going to go ahead and hit detect again. We're going to grab a few more. Now you might ask yourself why I'm not just grabbing all the holes at once and hitting go. Uh, sometimes the software has trouble when you grab a whole bunch of them. So I try to get the big ones first and then I'm going to go back and get the little ones. And um, now this, this hole that it's going to patch right here, this hole is bonkers. It goes across multiple dimensions and um, you know, it, it looks like, the, like that saddle, 3D transform saddle shape, whatever, foyer transform, who knows, I, I'm using big words, but either way, somehow it makes an absolutely gorgeous patch. And it's, I mean, it's literally as simple as you're seeing right here. Um, everything is just one click and you're done. There is no need to mess around. Look at that. Look at that. That is outstanding. I would spend hours trying to model that patch by hand if I needed to, if I needed to fix that. It would take me literally forever, and and this thing just just nailed it, just absolutely killed it. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and try to take care of some of the smaller holes, and um, I'm just gonna you know once I clear up a couple of these, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip ahead to the end so you can see the final finished product, and then I'll export it as an OBJ file. I can open it in Blender, I can open it in Mesh Mixer, Mesh Lab, I can even drop it straight into Fusion 360 if I felt thus inclined. Look at this, okay, we're just grabbing little teeny tiny holes, I'm just going to hit patch, and it's going to fix them, and my goodness, this thing is absolutely incredible. And, uh, and just like that, from start to finish, it took me less than 30 minutes to get a lead crystal sculpture. 3D scanned into my computer, absolutely outstanding. This is using the Revo Point Mini 2. Uh, you can use the Pop, what is it, the Pop 3, I think is what they're on right now. Um, but the Mini 2 is the one that I'm using here, and it is absolutely phenomenal. I could not, I could not have asked for a better scanner. And uh, so anyways, here we go. We're going to clean up a couple more holes, but I'm going to go ahead and stop this audio and we're going to skip ahead a little bit and uh, get to the finished product. So see you in just a second. All right, folks. So it went ahead and finished filling all the holes that I could find. And so I'm just going to go ahead real quick and click one more button. We're going to go ahead and export this as an OBJ file so we can open it up in Blender, do what we need to do or whatever software of choice. Um, we want to use this is just absolutely glorious but anyways we're gonna go ahead and export here and I've got my dialogues pop up on another screen so I'm gonna go ahead and um, once it's done processing I'm just gonna drag that window in where I open it up in um, what am I using mesh lab here I think I'm using mesh lab just to show you what it looks like but overall you'll, you'll get the idea um, it does take a second because there is a massive amount of detail a massive amount and when you see the finished product let's go ahead and drag it on over here it's opening up in mesh lab and my goodness I have a monster computer and the amount of detail that this thing pulled in is just incredible and here we go there it is look at that folks oh my goodness absolutely outstanding so there you have it revo point mini 2 phenomenal 3d scanner for uh, for beginners for advanced people i'm i'm a relative beginner but man i couldn't ask for a better scanner check it out get them on amazon get them at revo point i love this thing so uh there you go all right well thanks for watching my video and i hope you have a wonderful day